Hi guys, Rob Ring here. I hope you're doing very well. So today's video is called How I Coped with Suicidal Thoughts and Feelings. So, the first thing I would try and do is, is describe suicidal depression. You sort of wake up every day for months or years feeling like everything's about to go disastrously wrong. It's going to be a catastrophe. Like all your family are just about to die or just have died in a car crash. You feel like you weigh a ton or two tons and you feel very dark energy uh, in you all the time. Um, and it's fairly relentless. It doesn't really <laughs> go away. Um, the suicidality is... The, people aren't generally born with that disposition and most animals don't do it. And there are reasons for the suicidality. You know, this, must bear that in mind. Uh, probably extreme clinical depression is inseparable from uh, suicidality. Um, it also feels eternal, like it's never going to go away, you know, so self-destruction can seem like an act of grace rather than an act of sin. Um, so that's what it's like. The reasons I didn't successfully <laughs> successfully do it um, I'll be honest with you I, I, I had a plan at one point I had, I had a note or I'd been planning for months praying to die you know this crass atheist praying to the sky to die although God could be underneath us as well um, I didn't want to jump off a bridge in case that didn't do it and I'm quite a good swimmer so I could just have a cold swim back to shore and, and people will find out about it and that would be just even more ridiculous than actually doing it couldn't get hold of a gun even if I did I have my friend's cousin try to shoot himself with a shotgun when he's about 15, 16 survived it and is sort of housebound and, and deformed for want, for lack of a more charitable I'm sure there is a more charitable word but you know what I mean shotgun to the face head survival look it's not <laughs> not particularly in vogue that look um, there were two people who tried to well there's many people who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge but two people who survived it one of them as they went over said that they immediately realised that all the problems they had in their life were fixable immediately and were very glad that they didn't drown um, it's not that you find yourself wanting to kill yourself and that's the primary mover or cause it's that you're in so much pain <laughs> for whatever reason and there are lots of reasons why you could end up like that chronic pain in your testicles uh, you get both legs amputated you develop schizophrenia <laughs> you, you, there are lots of ways um, it's important to remember that and keep in perspective that things are causing it and it's not cause if it goes on for a while it can feel like it is you and, and you, it can almost feel like an instinct to um, to suicide you know and you, you become totally obsessed with it talk about <laughs> obsessive compulsive disorder um, man I it was, it was for a while it was my main goal plan overtook music even there uh, in fact, I, I used to think to myself before before the last two albums, um, well, you can't kill yourself yet because you haven't done that album. And then after that one, well, you can't kill yourself because of, of that. That was, it was more, it wasn't the only reason I was li living, but when I felt so bad and I just felt I had to end the derealization and the depression and the extreme anxiety, um, that's the kind of thing I would give myself as little landmarks in the future that you have to live to you're obliged to live to whether that's your daughter's birthday or your dad's birthday or your mum's operation or you know whatever it is what stopped me was fear cowardice the, um victor klemperer who i've mentioned before on this channel brilliant jewish professor living in germany under the third reich not so brilliant Awful, in fact, awful, awful, awful for many reasons. Said the only reason he didn't kill himself, and many Jewish people and gay people and disabled people did, was cowardice, believe it or not. Anyway, that's the way I feel. 
uh, did try an overdose, but it's not a very effective way to do it, even though I really did try. Um, mm, won't be doing that again, that's for sure. Think about, and I thought about, how much your family and friends will suffer as a result of you killing yourself and how much just raw soul pain and, and guilt and rumination and, you know, I could have done better, would have been left behind. I've, I've pointed out before how I think that's a little bit conceited and misguided, but people can't help. I'd feel, if my best friend killed himself, I'd think, why didn't they speak to me? Uh, in the possibly arrogant um, mindset that I could have, that I could have saved them, you know? Um, I, I guess I'm grateful to my suicidal patches that come along because without them I wouldn't have made this YouTube channel and a lot of people have said some disobliging things but a lot <laughs> a lot of people have said it's helped them it really helped them um, and I wouldn't have been able to you know talk about the colour black unless I'd been there which is isn't a racial <laughs> isn't a racial comment um, it is unfortunate I was thinking recently how the colour black say in Lord of the Rings is associated with everything bad and everything good is associated with white. Um, anyway, that's a, for a different video. Um, I reached out to cope with my suicidality as well. I told some people. And when you do that, like with anything, you get, when you get feedback on something, say a project at work or a suicidal project, it makes you look at it a bit differently and follow the right advice you can you can um definitely live and i saw some very good people crisis team and mental health people after that and addiction people after that because the diazepam that i've been using to try and pacify these derealization symptoms but the, obviously you need more and more of the diazepam and i was getting a bit out of control now on the legitimate weaning program um you feel like it's constant i won't lie to you i you know I've had very strong depression constantly for the last five years and suicidal patches in, in and out um, because of the derealization. And, <laughs> um, and you, it does, does feel constant and you almost at times forget, it becomes more and more the case, you forget what it's like to not be suicidally depressed. Um, or it, and you can trick yourself into thinking that it's been nothing but that for five years. You've forgotten about the times you've laughed. <laughs> In, uh, in the last five years, or the times when you'd seen something heartwarming, like a kitten, or, or, a kitten, or a, you know, a, a child or nephew or, or niece, um, laughing, smiling, being happy, something that cracked through the, the darkness, you know. Um, I someone said a good thing. I'd recommend this to you. Look at it. Look at your suicidal depression like scales. You've got pain and you've got coping mechanisms or strategies. And at the minute, if you're suicidal, your, the thumb is very much on the pain, pain <laughs> side of things, you know? Or is your thumb on the coping strategy side of things? I don't know, I should have thought about that. Um, you know what I mean? You just need to incorporate more things that make you feel better into your daily routine. You know, easier said than done, but is your best shot. I would also recommend looking at pho photographs of people from, say, 100 years ago, 130 years ago. 130 years ago, you look at a photograph of people in the street, you know, like looking all serious and stressed, both for the most part, uh, in black and white. Um, you realise all those people are gone there. All of them. All the problems, all the beefs they had, all the, all the anxieties, all the, all the depressions, all the weeping, all the smiling, all the sunshine, all the rain for them has gone and it, they took it so seriously um it can be it can be quite sobering um if i ever get if i ever get a tattoo i want it to say everything changes with the, like generation terrorists first album manic street preachers uh, kind of artwork on it um it was scroll right around the rows because things are very very impermanent um and i've done a video on called impermanence 2020 um stressing that if you're right now feeling suicidally depressed, please take one second at a time or one minute at a time or one day at a time and do tell people around you because you can't navigate totally solo in this world. Temperaments vary, but it's, 
doubt anyone can. Um, I'm very glad I didn't act on the thoughts, suicidal thoughts, the parrots on the shoulder, the, <laughs> the, um, the appearances in consciousness we take so seriously and can lead to such harmful things, especially in, um, in this case. As long as you breathe air, there is hope for you. And in fact, the main <laughs> teaching in Buddhism, mindfulness, meditation, uh, metta, loving kindness for past is that you start with that, focusing on breath, generally. If you're breathing, there's still hope for you. Winston Churchill said, when you're going through hell, don't stop. <laughs> um, and we were going to leave it there on a Winston Churchill quote. Because no doubt he suffered some quite extreme stress and was well known to suffer from depression and suicidality as well. So when you're going through hell, don't stop. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.